This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we are, oh, let me figure out how to share my screen here. Uh, settings, no, I don't want settings. Oh, no, I don't want to stop my recording. Oh, screen, there we go, share. All right, now, can you see my screen okay? And my bee does have a satin tail, Brenda. So. <laughs> yes, I can see your screen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so on page 17, number 68, Janie was telling us that now we have most all of the elements in our design and we should be rearranging them to give us room for a border around the design and to have room to put a name here in the middle top section. So, <clears throat> and of course you can move those things around and resize them and rechain and, you know, rotate them, resize them, whatever, flip them um, as we go along if it doesn't fit in with your name. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a border to this. And the border is going to be on the very outside of the things that we have in there already. So we're going to select our frame tab up here on the top. And in the frame tab, in the category over here on the top left, we want to select the star with the line under it, which is called motif underline. So we want to click on that. Once we click on that, we're going to come over to the right in the menu here to the group plate, the section called motif underline options and we're going to click on the repeats so that becomes active and we're going to change that to a one. And then we're going to come over to the select motif icon here that has the star on it and click on it. And that will bring up our selection box so we can tell it which motif we want to use. We should be in the universal group and we drop down the category until we get to general or I'm sorry geometric one motifs. So click on geometric one and then for the pattern drop that box down and scroll down to number 11 until you see this diamond shaped motif which is split into four little diamonds and um, click on that and then we are going to use all the default settings so we're ready to click OK. So where are you? Oh, we said, OK, I'm sorry. And then now we have to go back up to the top and click Apply. Once we click Apply, we get one copy of the, the motif that we selected. And mine is in the center of my hoop. Um, yours may be at the bottom because <clears throat> I've had mine come up at the bottom once or twice. <clears throat> Excuse me. And right now it's in the middle. So once you have your one copy of your motif, we're going to come up to the top and we're going to select the Encore tab. We're on step number 70. And we are going to, in the layout section, we are going to select the Encore to Hoop the picture of the hoop. And then over about the middle of that menu bar 
Our margin should be two millimeters. If it's not two millimeters, please change it. And the gap to the right of that should be set to zero. So they have no space between the stitches. Then we can look at what it's going to look like by clicking on the preview eyeball over on the right hand side in the menu bar. And that's what it should look like. <clears throat> All of them on the, the tops and sides are in a straight line. The ones in the corners are cattywampus. And that's normal. So we are ready to click apply and make that a real part of our design. <clears throat> All right, number 71, page 19. All of those motif stitches, stitches show up in our film strip as a group item. If we want to see them individually, or what we really want to do is we want to manipulate our corner ones so they're not cattywampus. So we need to reveal the groups, which we can do by coming down to the bottom of the film strip and using the icon on the very right, the reveal groups icon. When you and so click on that, and what happens is that now in your film strip you get an entry for each one of those individual motif stitch groups that is in your border. <clears throat> and it comes up with the very first one in a corner, mine is on the bottom left, selected. And we want to move that so it can um, be straight and so I'm going to <clears throat> click on the zoom to rectangle and then come over and enlarge that area where my crooked little motif is and use the rotate handle the round circle on the selection box to turn it so it's sitting straight up and down <clears throat> well, that's not quite straight up and down. Okay, but when it's straight up and down, it's not quite in line with the rest of them. So I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move it over a couple clicks so it is in line with the rest of them. And then you want to scroll up to the top left corner and select that one that's crooked. Rotate it. So it's straight up and down, and then use your arrow keys to line it up with the rest of them in that line. You want to do that for all four corners. So <clears throat> once you have the top left straightened out, then you can scroll over to the top right, select it, turn it, scooch it over a couple clicks, and then scroll down to the bottom right, select it, turn it, straight up and down, little one, and scoot it over to the right hand side so it's, mine's not straight. Come here. Hey, Judy, can I ask a question? Sure. Mine are so little, I'm struggling to be able to. Oh, wait a second. I guess I just need to. Did you zoom to rectangle, Diane? Oh, uh, no. I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on it. I know. Okay. You okay now? No, I still can't find zoom to rectangle. It should Everything... be in the green bar. I, well, I'm not sure what the Mac screen looks like, but it I should know. be down in the very, very bottom of your screen kind of off to the right. It's a square with a magnifying glass on it. Square. With, can you see mine? Um, I, I oh, put, there. Um, hang on. 
You know, I was thinking it would be nice if they put the little words by all of these little icons like they did on our fancy new machines. <laughs> well, it should hopefully if you cursor over an icon and sit right, there, it does. pop but up a description. I don't. OK, let me keep looking. I know I found it before. I'm there. sorry. I, I, <laughs> I can't help you there. And I always swear I'm going to watch the the Mac version of some of the webinars that Janie does, but I haven't done that and I should. Then that would help me to help you. Well, but it's not your responsibility to know everything. Thank you. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking they look cute at an angle. <laughs> well, you can you can have them at an angle if you would like. So I'm able to move them. She does have to know everything. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah. I agree. Like, I don't know that the big box. <laughs> I agree that. Well, Diane is minus dollars is what she gets. <laughs> did did everybody else get their little? Diamonds. Oh, good now, thank you. You found it? Yeah, I found it. Oh, good. So get, get them straightened up. Okay. All right. And then, um, Judy, can I ask you a question first? Of course. When you, when I click on one of these, you know, the corners. Yes. The box around it, I get it in position. When I click off of it, I just have uh, my cursor changes to uh, a double arrow each way. I have to go click on an, on something in the film strip to get back so I can select something. Is that, am I, what am I doing wrong or is that something new? Or are you, uh, are, you in, are you in the home tab? Or in the Encore tab? I was in the Home tab. Because um, I'm still in the Encore tab. Well, I go back and it doesn't seem to matter. Let me see if I get off. Yeah, so if you click on one, like click on one of your corners. OK. Click off of it. All right, now it, my cursor is a, a double-headed arrow once I'm in a selected field. Not, not the four arrows. Not the one to move. Now move off of that and, and click off. Okay. Hmm. Is, your, is your cursor normally just the, the one arrow like mine is now? Yes. Um, all right, if you go back to your home tab, do you have anything in highlighted in your select box up here? Yeah, I'll replace the selection. Huh. Maybe something else is selected, and if you click on select none, see if it helps. Okay, yeah, go ahead and go on. I just. Okay. It just. Well, that gave Diane time to fix her corners, unless she wanted to leave them cattywampus. No, but it did give me time to figure out how to make Zoom to Triangle work. So, Mary, many thanks. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So now we've got our corners straightened up. And. Now, if you would like your, and I'm going to go back to Zoom to fit so I can see the whole thing. If you would like your end line of motifs to touch the top and bottom line of motifs, then what we need to do is to select one of them and then hold your control key or Diane, your command key and go down and select each one of them in that line. OK.
until you have the whole bunch of them selected and then you can use your arrow keys and scooch that's a technical term scooch them over until they touch the top and bottom lines okay you do that on each end line of your motif border Oops. And then once they're all selected, you can scooch them so they touch. And then you have, in effect, a closed border rather than one that would leak things. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All right. So now in, in, and I think Janie tells us to make sure that we do this later, but we can do it now, is that we can collapse this group by going back to the reveal groups icon at the bottom of the film strip and clicking on it. And now we only have one entry in our film strip for that whole border. All right, so now we have our placemat. We have all our pretties where we want them, at least temporarily, and we are ready to add a name to our placemat. And so we are going to go to the letter tab at the top, and in the gallery viewer of all our fonts, we're going to click on it and we're going to scroll to the elegant category. They're in alphabetical sequence. And we're going to select the Curlew font 15 to 50 millimeters. All right. Once that's selected and showing up in your box up here on the left side, then you're going to type in the blank space here where it says letters you're going to type a name and i'm going to use the name that janie used of benjamin and i'm going to leave the defaults as they are and click apply not, not spelled correctly there i'm sorry elizabeth not spelled correctly I'm sorry, I didn't. B-E-N. Oh, I can't spell. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes. Okay, thank you. I can't talk and type at the same time. Okay. Now, you know, you can put it wherever you want it. You can change the size of it, you know. And now I still don't have it spelled right, do I? Ugh. E N J A M I N. One more time. Okay, is that right, Elizabeth? Ben I really J can't spell. I can only tell when it's not spelled right. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> I could just look at my paper and see how it's spelled too. Okay, so, you know, make it whatever size you want it and wherever you want it. All right, and um, to get it centered, if you look at the hoop, I've used one of the um, machine hoops rather than the universal hoop, and it has the little mark here that is the center. And when your name is selected, you have your rotation handle in the center, so you can kind of line those up to see that your name is centered. Just a, a little thing that helps me. Uh, could you repeat what you do, please? Because I totally, you lost me. Okay. The name? For, 
about centering it or well yeah okay you see this in when you have something selected you have your rotation set uh, handle in the center right here yes and in this hoop that i have there's a mark that shows you a center right here there's a little indentation in the hoop if you've used the universal group you may not have those I, oh, okay. marks but i used one from a machine group okay all right so now we have our placemat we have our border we have our name now on page 21 is a new feature which i had no clue about so i had to had to learn this along with you is that there's a feature called a name changer and there's a once we have a name or some letters on our screen and they are selected this icon up here name changer becomes active all right if i deselect my name then that gets grayed out it's no longer active but the minute i select my name this icon up here becomes active if i click on that icon then i get a whole nother window and called name changer and over here on the left side of it there's a box that says name list and right now it's got the name benjamin spelled correctly in it if i want if I were the little old lady in the shoe that had all the kids and I needed to make a placemat for each one of my kids, then I could make a list of names here. And to do that, I would just um, put my cursor at the end of the first name. I would use my enter key and I would put in the names of the rest of my kids in there and well since i can't talk and type i could just um uh, and to see as i typed them it changed the name on the view of the placemat but i can use these two arrows down here at the bottom to toggle between the different names to see what they look like and decide that I still can't type and spell. So you, you can provide it a name and then what happens is if you want to you want to stitch out these five different placemats if you click on the export tab down here it will export five different designs five different vp3 designs and put them in the folder wherever you tell it so if I say export, then you get a regular export window here. And if I click OK, then it says where do you know where do I want them to be? And I'm gonna say I want them in this folder, and I say save. You don't see anything right away the window closes but if i go back and i say i want to open the a file and i go to that folder thank you for not coming to my folder my designs class okay now i have placemat to alice placemat to benjamin placemat to david placemat to sammy and placemat to Susie. So if I move that over, come on. You can see that I it has created a design 
with each one of the different names in that design. So however many names you have in that list, it will create that many designs for you and you can embroider them out individually. It's kind of cool. That's a nice feature. That is a nice feature. Especially when you're making towels or something. Yeah. So now I'm going to go back into the name changer window and there's a, a few other things on here that we need to look at. Suppose that you have my little girl Alice has a friend whose name is also Alice and I want to put their last names on them. So I can type behind Alice, I could type Smith and I then I could put Alice Jones. And as it is, those happen, you know, there's enough room in the way that my placemat is laid out that those names fit the first name and the last name. However, if it doesn't fit, um, if the name was Jonestown, then it's too big. It, it runs into my design. So I have a choice of going back to my basic design, which they call a template, and moving things around, or I can use what is called this line delimiter down here at the bottom. And I have a choice of the characters I'm going to use for a de the, the delimiter. A delimiter is something that tells a, the software to make a break here. So if I say I'm going to use a comma and I put a comma behind Alice and then Jonestown, it puts it on two lines. Whoops, I shouldn't hit enter. It'll put it on two lines for me. Okay. Now, this one happens to fit. Um, let me try show you something else. Alice. Um, and she wants her whole name, Alice Annie Jonestown. Hmm, that's interesting. Evidently, it, I didn't ever try to do that before to make three lines. It will only do two lines. Okay. I have a so, comma in there. Huh? Try, taking out, try taking out that comma after Alice. That'll just run the Alice and Anne together. I have to have the, if I want it to split lines, I have to use the delimiter. See so if I just make it a, con a space. It doesn't, it solve, it doesn't do anything. Okay. Um, I want to. Try, try making Annie longer than Anne. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the name bigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now when I go back into name changer and I select, oops, I have to use the arrows to get where I want to. Okay. That's what I want to show you. Now notice that you have, because it's bigger, you have a red line around your design, the red line that you see around a hoop or a design that you're trying to put in too small of a hoop. That's the same kind of red line. It says it's too big for your hoop. And you also get a warning message down here at the bottom. The embroidery is too large for the hoop. All right. Now, the mm -hmm. software. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mary. Excuse me. I got to leave. My husband went for a walk the first time and he needs me to come and pick him up. So, Goodbye, everybody. Have a happy Easter. Okay. Thank you. You All too, right. Mary. Bye bye. Happy bye. Easter. Take care of him. I will. Okay. And come back and read this thing. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Now the software gives us a way to um, handle this. If I were to export at this point, it will give me an error message, or it should. No, it didn't, you little stinker. Okay, now it gives me an error message. One or more designs are outside of the hoop. Do you want to continue? If I say, okay, it will make, it will export VP3 files for the ones that fit in the hoop. It will not make, will not export one for the name that does not fit. It would export files for everything else, but not that one. Okay? But what you can do to be able to fix, if you will, that file is over here under this word line delimiter is an icon which is a pencil. And the, that icon is edit in a new window. If I click on that one, then the software is going to open me a totally new window. Hello. <laughs> there we go. It's going to open me a window with that name in the design. And at that point, then I have the opportunity to um, fix it. All right, now, you'll notice that my corners, instead of being squares, are round. And they are round when your selection is outside of the hoop. So if I just grab that and move it inside of the hoop, they change from round to square. All right, so that's when you're looking at a design and you see round corners instead of square corners, that means that your design is outside of your hoop. But now I can manipulate that name to make it fit inside the hoop. And it is up to me in this new window to do the export of the file. Does that make sense? And it didn't work when we, when we did them all as a group, but it gave me the opportunity to bounce out of that section of the software and fix this one that was incompatible with the rest of them. And if I want now want to make this as a a embroiderable file, then I can go up to file and say export and export it into the same place. I have to give it its own name. I'm just going to call it Alice. And then I would now have, <clears throat> excuse me. Besides having Benjamin, David, Sammy, and Susie, I would also have Alice. All right. Could Is I that... ask something? Well, um, of course. <laughs> the the green square mm -hmm. that is this one. Yes. What is that? Why is that? What is that? That What's tells it? you where, how big of an area you have in this particular hoop to put in any ribbon designs. Oh, golly, that's, oh, yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, I, I know. Yeah. yeah. In a way, it's kind of distracting to say, to see it there. You think, oh, I got to fit everything in that green area. Yeah. So we're going to okay, talk is, about yeah. that in a minute. Okay, thanks. Okay, so once you have exported this, remember that this is an extra window. So once you had ex exported it, then you would just close that window. And you could save this as a VP4, but you don't need to. 
you've exported it as a VP3, so you've got a file you can embroider. Okay. So, all right. Now, when you have, let's see, maybe, let me not get out of line here. Oh, one thing I want to bring up as for this delimiter, when you drop it down, it says you can use a space as a delimiter, but you need to be very careful of that in case you do have a name like Alice Ann with a space in between here, because if you accidentally or on purpose pick space as your delimiter, then it would put Alice on one line and Anne on a second line. So I, I prefer to use a real character instead of a space if I'm going to use a delimiter. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Brenda, you okay with that? Okay. All right, let me find out where I am. All right. We, uh, okay. I think we're on page 80 on, I mean, number 80 on page 22. Sorry. Okay. The name, Janie says here, the name list is similar to an internal clipboard and clears when you create the next name change of project. Individual lists are not retained in the template design. So when you reopen a saved working VP4 where you used name changer, the list will revert to the last one used in the project. So what that means is we're going to keep a record of our name. So we're going to copy, we're going to select this list of names using our regular Windows or Mac copy functions. So we're going to um, use um, our keyboard keys, either Control A or Command A, which selects all of the names. And then um, we've, and then we're going to do control C or control or command C to copy them. So that's going to put them on our computer's clipboard. And then we're going to close this name changer window. All right. And over here in our notes and settings area on the right hand side under our <clears throat> color list there are three symbols we want to make sure that the notes symbol the top one the little speech box with the three dots and it is selected you're going to click in the empty box and then you are going to use the paste command the control v or command v come on you were being naughty. I thought I... Nope, it didn't copy my names. How rude. Control A to select them. Control C to copy them. And over here, Control V to paste them. Why are you not being nice to me? I can't get mine to paste either in the notes and settings box. Well, it did earlier when I wasn't on camera. That's rude. <laughs> Quick notes. It, did you close that window number? It says yeah. click I, cancel. I did close my name changer window. Oh, oh OK. You, you use the quit command, though, not the export command. Right? I shouldn't use the export command. No, I just want to close the window. Oh, so you don't. The After you click the notes and you click the pencil, 
edit. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Brenda. Yeah. All right. After you click the notes, then all right. All right. Close the window. Click the how pen. Close, how do you close the window without hitting quit? You quit. You hit quit, oh, right? The, the name. The name. This this window. Yeah. Diane. Yeah. yeah. I just go up to the corner with the X. That's true. Oh, I don't have an X. Okay. Um, I hit cancel and it worked after I copied it. Okay. Oh, it does quit. say quit. It does it say says, quit in Mac. Yeah, quit in Mac. Do you have quit? Yep, I got it. And then you go there. And then you go and you touch. Oh, you have to click that little pen. The pencil and you get a new window. Right. And you paste into there. Yay! Got it. <laughs> and then you say okay. And now your name show up over here on the right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Yes, thank you. Okay. So now we have this becomes a part of the design when we save it. Okay. Now, we, if we make, we go to our file menu and we do save or save as and save our file as a VP4 and we call it a working placemat and save it, then it will save all of the names as well as everything else that we have done okay so now i'm if i say i want to go to a blank canvas and i want to open this file that i've just made my working driving me crazy my working placemat file working placemat right there and i open it then it shows the benjamin name and with nothing selected the name changer icon is not active but again if i select the name then the name changer becomes active and my names pop up in the notes for me okay and on 23 number 82 if the names don't show up in your notes and settings if you go to name changer and do that copy thing again, you can get them back. All right. And she has a note here, the help system has a good getting started guide and lots of helpful information for name changer. It does, I looked at it and it does have a lot of things in it. And one of the things it has is if you were not making placemats but you were making name labels for something you wanted to put labels on all the poor little old woman in the shoes all her kids so she knew they didn't forget their names that you could make the individual designs and then bring once you exported them you could bring them individually into a large hoop and position them and then embroider them all at once. Okay, and there's there's an example and even an exercise in the help section for doing that. All right, so now we have our placemat. We have everything in place. Our ribbon design is within our green box. 
and it doesn't matter that everything else may or may not be within that green box. So we can look at our design and decide if we want to change the sequence of how things stitch out at this point. You could, again, if you wanted to rearrange things, you could do that at this point by selecting them and moving them, resizing them, because they are still available to be resized or moved as they are on your template here. So assuming that that is exactly how I want my placemat to stitch out, I'm going to page 24 and um, Janie suggests on number 24, item number 84, that you save this and give it the name of placemat template. So you know that this is something that's a little bit unusual. It's not just a single design. It's got some extra features in it. And it will keep everything available just like it is now when you bring it back in to work on it. Or if you need to change something, you decide <clears throat> that you really didn't want the B on it or you wanted something else on it that you could bring it in and change it okay now this the box on page 24 and 25 tells us some things that we need to be aware of when we are exporting designs and i think in some ways we have encountered some of these before and that has to do with your export options in the configure module. So if you will open your configure module, so you get the window for it, <clears throat> and click on the export tab. And look at the very first section here where it says optimize for sewing. Mine only has optimized stitch length selected. If your, yours has combine, has combine, remove overlap, and color sort selected, those things will be active whenever you export a design. And if those are active when you're exporting this design with the ribbon design and all of the other things, some of which are outside of that green box, it's going to combine them all together as you know one design. Because some of those are hanging outside of that green box and they are now combined with the ribbon design the sewing the embroidery machine will say you said you had a ribbon design but you got stuff outside of the green box i'm not going to let you try to embroider this okay so that green box is important it's also important what features you have active in your export function. So the big one being the combined function when, <clears throat> excuse me, when you have a ribbon design and other designs that are outside of that green box. So Janie gives us a way to handle that. I'm going to uncheck mine again and just say, <clears throat> okay, because I normally leave mine with the combine unchecked. And I try to remember when I do an export to check them again, because when you do an export, you're going to see those same options, just like you did in the configure box 
and you have the option to turn them on or turn them off. I get in a hurry and I would forget to turn them off at times. So I have them, <clears throat> excuse me, I have them turned off. And if I want them, then I need to turn them on. So it's up to you how you set your options up in your software. Any questions, Brenda? Yeah, what does it mean when it says create center placement stitches? I don't well, that, we're going to talk about that, but go, I'll answer you now. That happens to only function on a decoration, which is our ring of stars over here. You've used the decoration function because it's not actually going to stitch out a star shape or it intends for you to add those embellishments after the embroidery is finished. The embroidery function will not stitch in like a bead or a sequin or something like that. It will create whatever kind of placement stitches you select in this section. So, Normally, the thing that you create center placement stitches and it will stitch just a little cross hair stitch where each one of those sequins needs to be placed. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so that's that's what that means. You're telling it what kind of a marker you want it to make in the embroidery function so you know where to put your decoration when the embroidery is complete. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna cancel out of there. All right. Um, so, Judy, can I ask a quick question? Sure. So I was looking back through our instructions and I, the whole ribbon design thing is confusing me. How so? Well, because I don't see, where did we put a ribbon, oh, the flower. It's, my, mine is the pink flower. Right which is why we changed it so that there's no other stuff. We we actually took this flower over here on the right. Yep, we took it and changed the... We, over the top of it, we digitized the ribbon design okay. and then we separated the two of them. And got rid of the first one. No, we still have the first one, it's over here on the right hand side with the gold center. Oh, I don't have them both, so I need to put that back in. Okay. I'm so confused. Sometimes I think this is way out of my league. I hate to well, admit that. <laughs> well, one, one sentence at a time. Yeah. <laughs> you can do exactly, it. Exactly, Elizabeth. What you need to do, Diane, is slow down and take it one one step at a time. Carefully. Well, and I need to I need to spend more time with it than just once a month when we all get together. Oh so. yeah. That would help. <laughs> exactly. It's like anything else, you know. You don't learn to play the piano by practicing one hour a month. That is true. Use it or lose it. Yeah. <laughs> and and things go to rust in a hurry, believe me. Okay. So let me get back off of my soapbox here and go back to Jamie's nice recipe for doing that. Okay, so um, <clears throat> whatever, okay, so this, let me step back a second. When we did the, we were playing with the name changer window and we exported those designs. If I had had the combine function active when I exported those designs, those designs will not stitch out because 
as we talked, I talked about a little bit earlier, it's going to combine everything and with stuff outside of the green box that's not embroidery designs, it's going to try to make them embroidery designs and said, I can't figure this out. So those, if you exported those, the designs at those, at that point, if you had the combined function active when you exported those, those designs are no good. Is that making sense? Okay. All right. So in order to make them work for us with the combined active, first thing we need to do is decide whose placemat we're going to make. And you can either go ahead and make it for Benjamin, or you could go back to name changer and use your previous or next arrows to um, pick the name that you want to embroider. And once you have done that, um, then you are going to go, you're not going to go back to your original window. You're going to use your edit in new window function and create this whole new window to work in. Okay, so I have, now I have two windows open. I have the one that says Benjamin on it, and I have the one that says Alice Smith on it, all right? And so Alice Smith is the one I've, I'm choosing to inverter out, and it is untitled. It doesn't have a name, and... Now I'm going to manipulate things within this design so I can have a, a cleaner thing and have it, <clears throat> it work like I want it to. So let's see. I'm on number... Um, 89 on page 25. All right. And she suggests that we do a save as, and we call this placemat, uh, and I'm going to call it Alice Combined. <clears throat> and it's a VP4 file. So I have a separate file name for this. And make sure that your border group is closed. So you only have one entry on your film strip for that border group. And then you are going to go through on your ribbon, uh, ribbon, on your or film strip, I'm sorry. And <clears throat> you're going to select everything except your ribbon design and your decorations. So you're gonna hold down your control key or your command key and select everything except those two designs. Then you are going to go up to your menu bar up here at top and you're going to drop down your combine submenu <clears throat> and you are going to select combine selected okay and now in your film strip you have three items you have your decorations and they may be in different sequences than mine decorations you have the combined embroideries inside and outside of your green box and you have your ribbon design and you can take that combined design and just click on it and move it to the top 
or you could have used your arrows down here at the bottom to move it wherever you wanted it. All right. Then um, we have over here on the right hand side in our list of colors, we still have one entry for every one of those diamonds in our border. So um, we've combined it. And now if we go back up to the top under the combine menu is the color sort option. And we can color sort our design and end up with 12 different color changes instead of 4011 that we had to, with all of those border elements having their own color stop. Okay. Anybody, everybody get that to work for them? I have only one color showing up on that side. Uh, what do you have selected over on your film strip? Everything except the two. You have, you have a combined element here? Well, maybe I got a. Well, I just combined. Nine, it says nine. I have no idea what's going on. You okay? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, you should, you know, let's see, you've got, I mean, the first two should be the, and depends on what sequence you put them on your, your thing too. Um, but I have 12 different colors for my combined part of the design. Does everybody else have a multiple? I had to make my box bigger. It's finally showing up. Okay, does you, you combine your elements? Your It worked, sort of. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, if if you want to rearrange these, which I did, I moved my all my just plain embroideries up to the top, and then I have my decoration, which in essence is a plain embroidery because it's just going to mark do the placement stitches it's not going to actually sew the sequins on and then i have my ribbon design which the machine would have shuffled to the back anyhow and then we want because we've already named it as a combined design we can just use the save function to update our file. And then at this point on page 26, um, you can export it or you can use the, and I have to move my thing, the send function, this little icon over here by the question mark at the very top right hand corner. There's a cloud and a little check mark. That's your send. And you could send this file to your embroidery machine. Or if you want to export your file as a VP3, so you have it as a VP3, just make sure in your export window that you have combine and color sort not checked. They need to be blank because, again, if you combine them, it's going to consider the whole thing as 
a an embroidery design and then it's going to be not workable all right and down at the very bottom of page 26 in red she has when the design loads on the wi-fi compatible machine the decorations and the ribbon embroidery will be separate design elements and all of the rest of our placemat designs will be merged and color sorted the ribbon support will see the separate ribbon element and you should be able to correctly proceed into the embroidery stitch out mode. Questions on that one? Or on anything that we've done so far today? Or even what we did last month? You ready to stitch out your place mat? Judy, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, you know, when we were doing the border with the diamonds? Yes. I still have them all highlighted on, on the left side. Um, you don't have them as, a, as one group? Let me go back to a different screen. Do they, um, hang on. Let's see. Yeah. Do they look like this? Where you've got them all separate like that? Yes, exactly. All right. So click on click on your orange thing, the top part of it, and come down to the bottom of your film strip. This icon that is on the very right that says reveal groups. Yes. Click on it and it'll mush them all into one. So they're not showing at all on that design panel then? Uh, oh, on the film strip or the design panel? Mm -hmm. the, fil uh, the film strip, I'm sorry. It shows as this orange block. Okay, that's it, okay, all right. All right? Yes. And that's, that's what you want it to be. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So if <clears throat> you would like a little rest from your um, placemat at this point, Janie has a little bonus topic for us just because she likes to tell us all sorts of great things. So if we go to the file menu and create a new window, Hello, new window. <laughs> okay, and we select blank canvas, and then we change our hoop, <clears throat> excuse me, to a 200 by 200 and make it a natural rotation and click OK so that we have our nice square hoop here. Come on, little window. There we go. <clears throat> now we are going to go to insert and there's there's two ways to what we're going to do is take an embroidery design and we're going to put a quilt design around it there's two ways to get the embroidery design into our hoop one of them is as we start on page 27, number 102, if we use the insert file and we go to our samples folders in the MySoNet and we go into plugin and stitch and flowers, we come back to the, our same magic flower VP4 that we used on our placemat and we click open, it pops up in the middle of our hoop. Okay. 
and she has us cut the flower, not just copy it, but to cut it. So we can right click on the fl selected flower and use the cut function, the scissors. And what it does is it clears it out of the hoop and it puts it on our clipboard. Then go back up to the top to your Create tab and go to the Quilt Block function, this one right here. And we're going to use the first option in the wizard, the filled block with an inner embroidery, and then click Next. We want it to be a square block, so we're going to, it comes up with shape number one, which is a square. Um, we want the angle to stay at zero, and we have to tell it how big our square is going to be, and we only need to we have a place for two measurements in case they're not the same. In this case, they are the same since it's a square, and we want it at 198 millimeters. And we want to make sure that there is no check mark in this cut line because that would put another row of stitching around the outside of our block to tell us where to cut it instead of us having to measure for a seam allowance. But this time we don't want that. <clears throat> All right, so now we're ready to continue. And when we come into this window, it says quilt block wizard load embroidery. It shows us a picture of our clipboard and we can just click on paste and it will put that little flower back into our hoop. All right. Now, I'm going to I'm going to go back out and show you the other way that you can do this. I'm going to clear my clipboard and I'm going to start with my empty hoop and I'm going to go in into quilt block from the create tab. I'm going to use the same option filled with quilt block with inner embroidery the same square shape zero angle a side is 198 millimeters and i am not doing a cut line so i go to the next and now where it says load embroidery i can say open embroidery and go to my <clears throat> sonet software folder samples plug-in stitch flowers and pick up my magic flower here and say open. And it's just like I pasted it before off of the clipboard. So there's it's the more than one way to skin a cat thing. There's a couple ways you can get a design into the quilt block wizard. <clears throat> when I click on next, then I have a window called adjust embroidery. Again, I could adjust the angle, which I don't want to. I could mirror the design sideways or up and down. The important thing here is that I tell it margin. I want to tell it how close to make my quilt design to my embroidery. And in this case, I want it to be close. So I'm setting the margin at two millimeters. All right, once I've done that, I say next. And this is the fun part. It will default to a stipple design around my embroidery design, but I have options for all sorts of other kinds of designs. So, you can play with those. Uh, what Janie has used for her example is down here at the bottom, the shape fill. And under options, you can choose a world of different kind of shapes. She has used shape 46. 
and she has changed the density to 40. The density is going to tell you how close or far apart your lines are in your quilting. So I'm going to say OK. And now my screen looks like what is in our handout at step number 106. So I will finish the design and now it shows up in my hoop. The whole point of this is that she wants us to see how this design that we've created shows up in the film strip so we know what we're looking at. So if you look at the film strip, it is a group of two designs. If we ungroup that, then we see it as two separate designs. We see the flower in the center and we see the quilting as a separate design. All right. Um, if you really wanted to change do something to your flower like we changed the center to gold when we did the placemat, then you still have that, should have that option to, oh, well, do the, yeah, the right thing. You still have that option that you could edit the design in Stitch Editor like we did when we changed it in the placemat. And her whole point of doing this was just to show you that you d don't necessarily have to, this is not cast in concrete. Once you've done a quilt block <clears throat> with a center design, you still can edit and manipulate these by ungrouping them and then selecting them individually. Okay. And I'm out of pages. Any questions? Good job. Good job. Thank you, Sandy. That was awesome. <laughs> so are you ready to play? I'm going to yeah. print mine again. I'm going to embroider mine again. Show us again the one, because I don't think everybody saw yours the other oh. day in class. Show us the one you already did, please. Oh, I can't see it. Nice. Cute. Nice. So, but you didn't, you didn't have the ribbon. No, attached. I don't, I don't have that. So the, the point about the ribbon design That's and all the, the combining and everything for you as a moot point at this, you know, at this time, should you get well, the an, an yeah. attachment, then you yeah. need to be conscious mm -hmm. of that combined function and what happens to you yeah. and your green box. And since I have the box version, I also don't have the name, how you can do that. Uh, Cause I bought the vo box instead of uh, the um, subscription. subscription. Yeah. And then I used that neat springtime different font. I thought that was pretty. So, but I'm going to do it again. There are some very, very nice fonts in the, the system. Maybe do a different border. I think I might do too. Okay. I stopped sharing my screen so we could see everybody. I could see. I see can I see it again, hold Cindy? It again. Yeah, hold it up again. I mean, okay, if you put on who's talking and if Sandy will talk, we'll see her full size. You have so to talk, Sandy. Oh, I have to talk? Oh, you have to yeah. talk. Oh, I'm talking. Keep yeah. talking. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking. Well, anyway. It's a great it's job. Uh, it's beautiful. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Uh-huh. I think to change, I might change the border though. 
and do it again. And I did it on a heavy, well, I backed um, with a heavy stabilizer. I fused a, on the back of it. Uh -huh. I tend to get puckers and I don't, I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> it takes some thinking and some trial and error and uh, a little education about stabilizers and stuff. Yeah. So, anybody this else? Is, this was really fun. Um, I found out you're keeping track of my e-learning. I have lots to do. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs> I asked Carol, I said, do you get notified if I do it? 